Can someone who is blind or low vision shoot a film or video using the built-in iPhone 13 camera? Well, that's exactly what I did, and here are my thoughts. Hey there, for those of you who don't know who I am, and if you're new to my channel, my name is Juan Alcazar. My channel name is JC5 Productions. I'm a legally blind filmmaker slash content creator here on YouTube, and yeah, on here I make short films, sit down videos like this, mainly talking about blindness, sometimes not, but for the most part, yes. Now last year I made a video talking about the accessibility for the app Filmic Pro, and that's another filmmaking app. It's been around for a while actually, and recently it had gotten compatibility with the voiceover screen reader, so folks who are low vision or who are blind were able to better use that app. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, like I said, if you're new to the channel, VoiceOver is a screen reader. It's a piece of software that's built into all Apple products, so blind or low vision users can use a Mac, an iPhone, an iPad, an Apple Watch, etc. And anything that you place your finger over or your cursor is over, it'll say out loud what that button is, what that text is, etc. Now something I didn't do while testing out Filmic Pro is testing out the built-in camera for the iPhone to see how that fared. But now, because I have an iPhone 13 Pro, I wanted to check that out. Recently, I shot a short film dedicated to my late father who actually passed away recently. I wanted to make a short film dedicated to him, but I also wanted that film to be the very first one that I made with the iPhone 13 Pro. I recently had gotten it uh, at that time, so I wanted to just be able to shoot in that format. If you want to take a look at the film, then I'm going to leave a link in the description below so you can check it out. For those of you who have vision, I'm including a few shots from it right now. Also on a side note, if you want to check this out as well, James Rath, a filmmaker, a legally blind filmmaker here on YouTube, he's very well known in the blind community, he has a podcast called See Different, and he actually interviewed me on one of his podcast episodes. There we talked about just filmmaking, Apple products, a few other things in general. But yeah, if you want to hear what two blind filmmakers talk about, what they geek out, because they both happen to be Apple fans too, <laughs> check that out. I'm going to leave a link in the description as well. Now, I highly recommend checking out James's channel. He is he, he's, a, he's an incredible advocate. He is an awesome voice for the blind community. It's a great overall channel to go check out. So go check out James's channel. So what do I think about the iPhone 13 Pro's camera after using it to film a project? Well, here's what I liked. Most of this has to do with the fact that voiceover is compatible with this camera and not just the camera, but the phone in general. Camera control status, flash, off, but exposure, minus 1.3, but camera controls, button, collapsed, video configuration, resolution, 4K, but frame rate, 24 frames per second, 0 seconds, zoom, 1.0 times, 1.1 times. The fact that I can move around the screen and voiceover will tell me where I am, which setting it is, it's it's very simple and it just works and it, it, it may sound almost like a very mundane type of detail but you have to think about this if you're not able to see the screen well or at all and you're relying on swipes and gestures to get from one button to another that comes in really big because i don't have to put my face up close to the screen to be able to see what's where i can see in a general sense you know given the fact that everything's kind of blurry and out of focus but i can tell where the buttons are in general but if I need it for it to tell me what it is, then voiceover is right there to tell me. The only reason I'm really using a screen for the most part is just to check my framing and my exposure. And that's basically it. Everything else I could do with the screen off if I wanted to. Something else that I like is the fact that, yes, voiceover again, it tells you if the camera's level. It'll either tell you to tilt left or tilt right or it'll make an audible tune like it'll make a sound to let you know whether the camera's level or not tilt left level another thing is voiceover tells you in general what is in the frame there's a feature on the iphone called screen recognition and what that does it tells you what is in frame in the camera like basically what the camera sees it gives you an overall sense of what it sees it's not the most accurate 
all the time. Like it once thought my my uh, Chihuahua slash Terrier mix was a bulldog. I know she's a little chunky, but we ate yikes. <laughs> Bulldog? <laughs> I don't know about that. But anyway, it's still, you know, it's not able to tell you exactly what is everything that's in frame, but if you just want a general sense, like if you're in a pinch and need to know what you're filming overall, then I think it's, it's a great feature to have. And I think it's a great feature for blind people to have, especially more so if they're taking pictures. Viewfinder, focus unlocked, image, computer keyboard. The video quality was something else that I liked. And it, like I said, it was really impressive being able to shoot in Dolby 10-bit HDR video in 4K. And I mean, my DSLR, it's, that doesn't even shoot 4K. It's a Canon T7i. I mean, granted, I probably need a new camera, but still, just it, it's, it's impressive that it's able to get that quality out from a cell phone to realize that I can use this footage, I can use this footage quality to film a short film if I wanted to. I mean, you might think that, oh, a phone, it, it's it's a phone. I mean, yeah, it, it's true, it is a phone. But the thing is, people were saying that about DSLRs when they first came out, that they're never going to rival, you know, high-end video cameras that films are made in. And now the cinema cameras that are being used now, they're more, you know, they can be more compact. Than before, granted, some you know, if you deck them out completely, they're they're monsters. But uh, still, though, some video cameras, like the Blackmagic cinema cameras, those are those are relatively small in size. Something else that I liked, and this is voiceover as well, the focusing system. And if if you have a little bit of vision, then you can tap somewhere on the screen once. You can tap somewhere in the viewfinder section of the screen and then once you want to focus that you just double tap it'll say focus locked and if you want to lock your focus and your exposure you double tap in the viewfinder double tap and hold and visually a yellow box will pop out and if you, if you can't see anything what it'll say is 0.0, .0 lux seconds and that's to change your exposure but that's also to let you know that hey your exposure and your focus are locked if you have no vision though and you just want to find your focus then if you move the camera around let autofocus do its thing if you just double tap in the viewfinder it'll say focus locked as well and then you can lock your exposure like the way i just did the way i just explained just now i also want to mention that the iphone 13 pro and not just that but the iphone in general it's been the most accessible camera that i've ever used you really do have to stop and think about it for someone who is blind or visually impaired, who uses a screen reader, which is basically a way to navigate your phone in an auditory way. To not just have the phone the ability to do that, but to also have the ability for the camera app to be compatible with that software so someone who is blind or low vision to take a picture, to take a video. That's pretty freaking awesome if you ask me. And kudos to Apple for providing those tools for us because really when I'm filming videos with the iPhone it doesn't feel like I'm straining my eyes as much as when I'm using my DSLR because a lot of times when I'm using my DSLR I have to put my face really up close to the screen just to see what settings I'm, I'm tweaking, what settings are where, and in comparison with voiceover telling me what I'm tweaking, it really does take a lot of that eye strain just out of the equation. Now with all this being said, yes there are a few cons, there's a few things that I wish voiceover was able to do better with the built-in camera and there's a few things that I wish were added. Now exposure and focus, yes you can tweak those at the same time but that's also to its detriment and I really wish that the iPhone had its own separate exposure and white balance. It's great to be able to tweak them both at the same time, but let's say if I move my camera around, I want to keep the same focus, but the exposure's changed and I have to tweak my exposure, then that means I have to, well, double tap and tweak the exposure, but then the focus gets thrown off as well, so I think it'd be better if there was something to tweak them separately. And this is where I'm hoping that we get some sort of pro mode available for the iPhone. It'd be pretty cool if those of us who really want to just tweak more more controls on the iPhone are able to switch something on in the settings like pro mode and we would have 
you know, white balance control, exposure control, focus control, and hey, maybe even shutter speed control. I think that'd be great. And by keeping that setting off, it wouldn't be as intimidating for people who are new to the camera. I think a pro mode would be pretty cool, especially in the, no pun intended, in the pro models. Something else I don't like is when I go back and check like footage that I've shot and then I go back into the camera app, it's just, it feels like my exposure has changed and like something's not quite right. So the fact that I have to, you know, instead of just going back and just starting to film again, I have to go tweak things. Yes, there's some settings that let you lock different things like exposure and just a bunch of other things as well so it doesn't reset back to, to just the standard settings like I keep everything in video mode. Maybe I'm doing something wrong but if I am let me know but still I mean if, if I'm not then I'd like for there to be just everything to be locked if, if possible. Another issue that I had. So yes the iPhone voiceover tells you what's in frame in general but the thing is it doesn't really tell you when you're in frame in general. Now, in picture mode, something that I really do like is that if you're taking a picture or, or a selfie, it'll tell you that there's a face in the frame. One face near right edge. Near left edge. Centered. Near top edge. Centered. I don't recall there being such a feature in video mode, and I wish there was. Maybe there is, but maybe I'm just... Uh, I don't know, maybe just activates differently in video mode. Something that I would like is, like, let's say for this setup, for the camera to tell you that you're in frame. But I do understand, though, if <laughs> taking the picture is one thing, filming a video is something else. If I'm filming a video with a bunch of people running around, I mean, I, I can't even imagine what voiceover is going to tell you. It'll be in your ear the whole time saying, like, person here, person there. So I, I get it. But if there was a toggle th that let you frame properly before hitting record, I think that would that would definitely help. At least for me, it would. Granted, you could go into picture mode to frame yourself like that in front of the camera and then switch it to video mode. But the thing is, when you do that, when you switch to video mode, it does crop the edges. So if you happen to be close to one of the edges of the frame and you go to video mode, then you, you might get cut off. Something people were talking about a lot in the iPhone 13 Pro is cinematic mode, and I get it, it's it's interesting, it's new, but uh, it also feels like it's still being experimented with, it still feels like it's in beta, and y you could tell, I mean, you can tell the software limitations, and it's just... It's an interesting thing to, to play around with if you want to, but it's not really for me. I prefer actual bokeh, so actual out of focus, uh, you know, from an optical perspective. And you can still do that though, you just have to use the telephoto lens and just have a lot of distance between, you know, you and the background. If the background is further away from you and you're using the telephoto lens, you can achieve that out of focus, you know, that blurry out of focus look. But uh, if you're gonna use cinematic mode, then just just realize that it's it's not perfect and uh, you know there's still a ways to go but it'll be interesting to see what happens a few phone updates a few software updates and a few camera updates from now and the last thing that I don't like but this is more just you know a general thing as good as the quality is right now you do have to realize that you're still using a phone it's not a DSLR it's not a cinema camera it's going to have smaller sensors and it's definitely going to have smaller lenses. Now that being said though, is you shouldn't really just dismiss the iPhone or any cell phone just because they're not a DSLR or a cinema camera. And I think that you really shouldn't limit yourself or think that just because you're not using this camera or that camera that you're going to get an inferior product. I mean. A lot of films have been shot with not the most ideal cameras or gear, and when you think about it, a camera alone isn't going to automatically make a film great. You can give someone who has zero camera experience the most advanced cinema camera ever, and the footage might come out really, really crappy and really amateurish. And then you might give someone who is a well-experienced director of photography who shoots a lot of films, you can give them a cell phone and 
they might produce some really impressive quality footage and most people might not ever know or realize that it was shot on the phone so it's really more about the person behind the camera and how much they know than the camera itself. So conclusion, am I going to be using the iPhone 13 Pro more often than my DSLR? Yes and no. No because I'm still used to using a DSLR and just, you know, just being part of that workflow. I'm much more familiar and comfortable with that. But yes because I've, I've noticed what the iPhone can do, especially with the short film that I just shot. Granted, I've shot films prior to this with Filmic Pro with earlier iPhones, but I, I really want to try the built-in camera now. I really want to keep experimenting with it, seeing what it can do, and like I said, I, I really want to test what this phone can do, because it's been impressing me so far, so don't be surprised if I keep filming more more projects, more films like this, and it might be interesting in the future to see if you guys can pick out which ones were, you know, non-iPhone videos and which ones were. So anyway, those are just my thoughts, and I'm curious, if you're someone who's blind or low vision and use voiceover, have you thought of using the built-in camera to shoot videos? Do you take pictures and videos with it already? Did you know about a few of the things that I mentioned on here? Or are you considering getting an iPhone 13 Pro now or just a standard iPhone 13 and giving it a try? Also check out that podcast I did with James Rath that I mentioned earlier, link in the description. And yeah, I will see you folks in the next video. I'll talk to you then and hey, take it easy.